What up, second grade? Miss Carl here. Today, we're going to be talking about metaphors. So, a metaphor is when we compare two things, but we do not use like or as to compare them. So, you may have heard of a simile, and that's when we compare two things, but we use like or as to compare them. A metaphor, we compare two things, but we do not use like or as to compare those two things. A metaphor is a type of figurative language, and figurative language is a way for authors to really make their readers picture what they're thinking. It really paints a picture in our mind of what the author is talking about. So let me go ahead and share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so I have the sentence here. A box of crayons is the sun on a dreary, rainy day. Listen to me as I say it again. A box of crayons is the sun on a dreary, rainy day. So this is a metaphor here. We're comparing two things. Now the first thing we need to do is decide what is being compared. Well, we're comparing a, oh, let me do that. We're comparing a box of crayons to the sun. So we're comparing a box of crayons to the sun. Now we need to think about how they relate to each other so that we can understand the metaphor. So a box of crayons is the sun on a dreary, rainy day. So think about the sun on a dreary day. Like if it's raining and it's gross out and then all of a sudden you see the sun. It's kind of like bright, it makes you feel good, right? There's the brightness in there and it kind of lights up, right? It lights up the day. So a box of crayons and the sun both kind of light up the day. So when you open up that box of crayons and you see all those bright, beautiful colors, you see that brightness and you get that happiness in you. So a box of crayons is like the sun on a dreary, rainy day, has that brightness and that joy. So that's how we compared. The first thing we did was we figured out what two things we were comparing. In this sentence, we were comparing a box of crayons to the sun. And then we had to see what made them alike? How? What's being compared here? And what are we trying to get? What's the author wanting us to see? Well, the author wants us to get that picture of a box of crayons being a bright, happy thing, like when we see the sun on a dreary, rainy day. So you can see how a metaphor really paints a really cool picture in the reader's mind. So let's go ahead and practice some more of these metaphors. So at the top, we'll just read this. It says, a metaphor compares two different things. It does not use the word like or as. Read the lines, write the two things the author compares, then explain what each metaphor means. All right, so we're going to read the sentence. We're going to write what is being compared, and then what does it mean? Number one, the children were an army of ants walking to class in a happy trance. So we are comparing the children and ants. So children and ants. That is what is being compared here. We're comparing children and ants. So both things what? So when we're trying to figure out what this metaphor we means, we need to think about what both things have in common. So the children were an army of ants walking to class in a happy trance. So think about ants. They're just running around doing what they need to do. That's like the children walking to class. If you were to look in the hallway, you'd see all these different children running to class. So both things run around. Both things are running around to where they need to go. Think about when you see a group of ants and they're all running around and going different places. That's like what the children look like in the hallway, all getting ready to go to class. So we have the metaphor. Now it's a metaphor because we don't use the word like or as. If it had the word like or as, that'd be a simile, but it does not. So we know it's a metaphor because we're comparing two things. It does not use like or as. We figured out what two things we were comparing, children and ants, and then both things run around to where they need to go. And that's where we're getting that, that comparison. But you could have just said the children ran to class, but you don't get as good of a picture, a mental imagery picture in your head than when you read the children were an army of ants walking to class in a happy trance. We picture that now. It gives us a better image in our mind. So that's why figurative language is important. My legs were a machine moving me to the finish line. So what two things are we comparing here? We're comparing legs, legs and a machine. 
So my legs are a machine moving me to the finish line. Both things are what? If you have a machine, it just goes, goes, and goes and does not tire out. So if your legs were just moving like a machine, both things were what? Moving without stopping. Just going and going, right? Machine keeps trucking along. And if your legs were a machine moving to the finish line of a race, you were just trucking along. So again, this is a metaphor. We're comparing legs to a machine, we're not using like a RAS, and both things are moving without stopping. Again, you could have just said my legs would not stop moving as I got to the finish line, but we don't get as much of a picture in our mind when we read that. My legs were a machine moving me to the finish line. That gives us a more vivid, detailed picture in our mind. Number three, his smile was sunlight that lit up the room. So what two things are being compared? Well, we're comparing smile, his smile, and sunlight. So we're comparing his smile and sunlight. Both things what? Both things light up the room, right? They both bring brightness and joy. They both brighten up the day. Light up a room. Again, so metaphor, his smile was sunlight that lit up a room. We're comparing his smile to sunlight, and both things bring brightness and joy. So we get the idea that when whoever this kid is walked into the room and smiled, he just brightened everyone's day up. Now again, the author could have said his smile made everyone happy, but again, it's not as great as a picture as his smile was sunlight that lit up the room. We get a better picture in my, my, our minds. All right, our last one we're going to practice. The runner was lightning in the race. So both what two things are being compared? Well, we're comparing a runner, a runner, and lightning. Both things are fast, right? When lightning strikes, it strikes fast. So we could see that we're, they want the author wants us to get that the runner was fast. The runner was lightning in the race. What two things are being compared? A runner and lightning. And both things are fast. So we can get the idea that the runner was super fast in the race. Great job, second grade. So a metaphor, real quick before you go, let's review. It compares two things, but it does not use like or as. How you can figure out what a metaphor means? Well, first, figure out what two things are being compared and then find out what's similar about those, what's the same, and you're able to piece together what the author wants you to understand from that sentence. And again, you might say, Miss Crawl, why do we use metaphors? They help paint a more vivid picture in our minds when we read. All right, second grade, see you next time, great job.